Hey guys, my name is Drew and this is my husband, T. And we are back again with another Conversations in the Living Room where we lift the curtain on our blueprint to love, pleasure and relationships. Ooh. So in today's episode, we're going to be talking about something that we are seeing spoken about quite a bit as it relates to dating, mm. but it's something that impacts us even when you're in a relationship, even when you're in a marriage. It's something that is ever present and something that you have to continue to work to find balance with. And that is the struggles with hypermasculinity <laughs> and desirability within gay marriages and relationships alike. So we are going to define what toxic masculinity and what hypermasculinity means. We're also going to unpack how desirability and hypermasculinity, how that impacts our day-to-day -day and our relationship. And also just be a bit transparent and talk about the journey that we've had with being authentic in our masculine and feminine expressions and how that's informed the dynamics of our relationship. So it's going to be a meaty topic. If there are any terms that we use that we don't explain, please add them in the comments because I think there's a lot of like jargon around this topic and I think we'll try our best to just speak as plainly and as simply as possible. Mm -hmm. So let's start with how do you define masculinity? How I define masculinity. I used to define masculinity through things that were seen as traditionally masculine. I used to define masculinity as like the way you walked, mm. the way you talked, the way you express or didn't express your emotions, like to not express emotions was masculine to me. To talk in a very assertive and aggressive way was masculine to me. To like be interested in sports was masculine to me. Mm. To be interested in certain movies and media, like, I don't know, Top Gun or whatever, masculine not people. <laughs> like yeah, what? But that to me was masculine. But I think as I've gotten older, I don't even think it's an age thing. I think just as my relationship with masculinity has changed over the years, now I actually find it very difficult to define masculinity. Hmm. I don't actually really know what it is anymore because I have met guys who are like socially not present feminine, but there's this deep masculine energy about them that I can't fully describe. So now my relationship with masculinity is that everyone has masculine feminine energies. And I think the combination of the two is actually required for you to be a complete human being. Mm. Okay, so first question. Mm. At what point in our relationship did you feel pressure to perform masculinity? I think very early on in our relationship, I think you made it quite evident that you were into more masculine presenting men. And I don't think you did it consciously, but I think subconsciously, oh yeah, I'm gonna drag you. Subconsciously, it was the little things I would do that would, could be defined as effeminate. And you could see him recoil into himself like, what are you doing? Get the ick. <laughs> Get the ick, like you could see it. I would be uncomfortable to twerk around him. I would be uncomfortable to, I don't know, like I'm going to give you some stereotypical <laughs> effeminate things here now. All even the, the yes, the, like you're eating, all that shit. I would never do that in the past because oh, in yeah, his head. Oh yeah, you did it. Nope. In his head, it was like, oh my God, I want a man who's a, like just very dumb shit. Thinking about it now compared to where we are. And I think also for me, it's vice versa because for him, I was never into him wanting to dress up, wanting to, I don't know, if when, when he danced was the only time I really enjoyed him expressing his femininity. But outside of that... Yeah, there was yeah, pressure definitely both ways. Both ways, but more so on me. But I think we'll get into it because it got so bad. I don't know how many times we've talked about this where we were on holiday and we got spiked oh please okay at that point it, we were so this was like two years ago guys i wasn't sure because you had this whole idea of what you wanted from me so we were in a club where we got spiked and because i had to present myself as a masculine man i was like let's stay here and prove to them that we are okay we were not okay i was, did i say that to you though i was ready to leave that club he said it to me afterwards but i did not believe him because you have built me into this cold hearted, like I had to be hyper masculine. Anyway, let's move on to the next topic. So, okay. <laughs> wow. 
Have you ever felt pressure to appear more masculine, to be seen as desirable by me or by the gay community? I don't, I use gay community lightly. I don't actually think there is a gay community as other gay people. That's all I'm gonna say. I hope you guys see how uncomfortable I am. This is what I have to deal with. Now that I've, now that I've gone rid of my hyper masculinity and I'm like a soft sweetheart, I get silenced in this relationship. But no, um, Oh yeah, of course. Mm -hmm. Of course. I think it's the law of attraction. I think that when you are not confident in who you are and what you bring to the table, there is this air that you need to present yourself to attract something. Whereas some of the most attractive people I've ever met or seen are the people who express themselves with such fluidity. Like, it is the sexiest expression known to mankind. So yes, in the beginning, there was this idea that I had to express myself as a masculine man in order to attract men. But now that I've gotten older, it is such a big turn on to see my husband be fluid in whatever he wants to express. Like, it is very attractive. And even with other people, but that's a different conversation. But yeah, back to did you. you. Did you ever label mask for mask on your, on your grinder profile? No. Okay, cool. Just no. as long as... I'm the DL though. But yeah, what about you? Yeah, I felt pressure to mask up in order to be desirable. You never did, but you felt the pressure though. Mm. Wow, okay. I felt the pressure both in our relationship and outside of it. How did that play out for me? I think it played out in how I would speak. I remember always trying to be really conscious of how I speak and making sure that I had no, like I, I would speak in a lower tone than I would typically speak. When I get excited, my voice can go high, like, but I made sure I would kind of cover that up. How I dressed as well, like, especially when meeting guys for like hookups, like oh that would be like, make sure I wear all black, like a hoodie, like a do-rag. Yeah, so I think it would mainly rear itself during, rear itself during hookups. When I visit the club, even though the club is considered to be a space that you're supposed to just be free, I, I truly mm -hmm. believe that, but that's not always the case. But then once specific songs would come on, all of that facade would just like float away, like get yeah. bodied, single ladies, back in the day, end of time. Long way to go, Cassie. Like, yeah. if you know, if my girls know, you know, like, that the song would just melt away. As as Rihanna, where on. have you been? Yeah, oh. yeah. Do, 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 bah. Do, do, bah, bah. But yeah, that was definitely where I would feel it the most. And then I feel most comfortable with my friends to just, like, express myself. Yeah. Me. But I think in our relationship, Funny enough, the things that would help me feel more comfortable in expressing my femininity within our relationship was actually shows like Noah's Ark and seeing how Wade, seeing how he responded to Noah just expressing himself fully. Mm -hmm. And it's so interesting because I remember like, I think I programmed myself to also believe that I didn't find femininity attractive because I was gay, I was only into men, right? But I remember now, like, program myself to not even find Noah attractive when I first watched Noah's Ark. Now I'm looking back at it, I'm like, Noah was fine. Like, how did I not allow myself to see this man as desirable just because I programmed myself to not see femininity in men as attractive? Yeah. So I think that reprogramming has just opened me up to a lot more desire. Yeah, and I think one of the beauty with life is that you can learn, you can change, you can grow. Mm. In the sense that I'm not about to sit in here and tell you that, oh, we just switched overnight. Like there were some innate traits that really affected our relationship based on masculinity. Because I think the time where we were play fighting, where it almost became like a, a fight was because it was the hyper masculinity Andrew wanted me to present. Oh uh, yeah. yeah, wow. Gaslit the hell out of me that night. This was many years ago, guys. It was so interesting because now I'm thinking about it, that was one of the best. Mm. Yeah, but it was a great night, let's just say, from Some all Some good that, things could come out of toxic <laughs> masculinity. Some good things could. But yeah, all jokes aside though, it was, it was... Wow, that really was. And I also remember another time where we were in the club and I think it was one of the first or few times you twerked in front of me very early on in our relationship. I remember you were like, oh, and I was like, oh yeah, I started cheering you on like, yes. And you were like, just cause I, 
You turn around and like, just because I twerk don't mean I won't bend you over and f you. I remember when that happened. And I remember being like, whoa, I didn't think that you... Yeah. But I get why you were like that, because obviously I had now changed and I wasn't interested in hyper-masculine presentation, mm. but I had told you that. Mm. So I remember it being so caught off guard, like, okay, like, I know, you don't have to... Yeah. You don't have to pop all of. Yeah, this is a memory, down memory lane. Do you remember that? I do. Can we, oh, can so we not? Funny. Yeah, because I didn't tell you to tell the camera what you used to gaslight me, because <laughs> do you want to talk about it? No, I thought as much. But honestly, you can change, you can learn, you can grow. How has navigating masculinity and femininity and our relationship impacted our attraction to each other? I think allowing the freedom of expression with the masculine and feminine energy has made our relationship become stronger in the sense that when we first were together, I told Andrew, we cannot be friends. Like, it is literally just a relationship. Like, I don't find you... Like, I don't know how to explain to you. There was no friendship there. Wait, did you actually say that we can't be friends? Not that we can't be friends, but like, I don't see this being... Like, it was a relationship, but not a friendship. Yeah. In the sense that we're so different. <laughs> like, I, I, like, I saw it as a relationship, not a friendship. We're so different. Now, thinking about it, a lot of that played a role between the masculine and feminine um, expression on in terms of our masculinity and femininity. It was like expressing femininity was for friends, but not for our relationship. Exactly. Mm. And now I think about it, it's like, this is my best friend. Like, if we're at the club, get on stage, headstand, <laughs> flip. If you want to, I don't know how to explain it. If you want to seduce somebody, seduce them. If you want to approach somebody, approach them. Like, the freedom that we have in not trying to box the energy we present or the energy we present to each other has made us so, so grounded and loved in our relationship for me. Like, sexually, it is great. It is freaking great. Let me not give too much. But to answer your question, things are a lot better when expression is fully allowed in the relationship. Yeah, I would agree. I definitely think I just feel also more desired for myself because I feel like I'm being desired more as a well-rounded person, mm. right? Like being able to express my femininity and my masculinity and still be found attractive feels like a deeper level of attraction than first me just breaking off this one part of myself mm. and you finding that part of myself desirable. I remember there was been some specific moments like the first time I did drag um, <laughs> back, I think it was like in 2017 or something. And I remember I, I had an alter ego party with all my friends. It was basically a drag party, but even then I had a fear of calling it a drag party. So I called it an alter ego party because Shut for me, you. yeah, that was more, to be fair, alter ego is more fab actually anyway, I think as a, yeah. as a concept, well, at least at that time. So I had like a alter ego party and I, wore drag and I had like a full bust down middle part. I had booty shorts, I had thigh high boots and I had makeup and a corset. And I remember having so much fear of being seen by Tosin, but I was still felt so compelled to do it anyway because I knew it would be so much fun and I knew it would feel like I would tap into a side of myself that I just was really excited to tap into. And I remember, I think I invited you, but you said no at first, mm. um, because I think you had a clash or something. You had something else, but you were in London at the time. But then you ended up rolling through anyway. What is Holy Ghost service? RCCG people know what <laughs> The big church conference, I, I skipped that. No, you week. went, and then you came afterwards. No, the conference finishes at 3, 4 a.m. I okay. left the conference early to spend time with this man. Me and Tribe, right. Always taking me out of church for yeah. one. And then I remember Tosa came over and I was just like <laughs> in my full drag outfit. And I remember like forcing myself to almost like push myself onto you to overcome the fear that I had in myself for mm. not I had a fear of not being seen as desirable from that moment from because I was in drag. And I remember there was a rule at that party, it was like no phones. Again, that was the rule because I had a fear of being seen. But I remember like twerking on toasting and like forcing myself to really like be, be 
be seen by him because I wanted him to still see that version of me and still find me attractive. And I think, how was your experience the first time? Verse, we'll talk about the last time. The first time I think was a shock. I think only because for me, <laughs> there is something about a man in drag and how do I put it? <laughs> you know what I'm... I feel like I know what you're about to say. There's something about a man dressed... I don't want to use the word drag. I don't know. Women's clothing. I'm going to call it women's yeah, clothing. Yeah, for the it sake wasn't of the drag, dress. actually. Yeah, it was just... That I personally, like when I saw that in Andrew, I wasn't like, this is fab. Because I am the kind of person that I know the day that I do fully want to dress up in women's clothing, my beard is gone. My boss down middle part... I want to feel like the feminine of feminist of fe So to me, when I saw him, I was just like, <laughs> this is cool, you're just playing dress up, but it's not like I find it attractive. It's not this, but whereas, <laughs> let's fast forward to the most recent time where we dressed up for Halloween and he dressed up as Beyonce. And I saw him with the shirt on and the heels and the tie high, like his legs super exposed. like. I was like, yes, like that is hot. The hair, the makeup, everything. I'm like, this is hot. Like, I, that's why I kept on telling when he kept on because I was like, make sure you stretch that leg out for that picture. Yeah, he was keeping me in that. Like, make sure that leg, and yeah. everybody was commenting your legs because I was like, yes, this is hot. So to me, it wasn't necessarily the drag or- It was the execution. It's the execution, that the execution. Yeah. 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 It was, yeah. the execution was poor. We've, we've got up. Because when you even did the Claremont yeah. Twins, I love that because that was like good execution, good thought behind yes. it. Yes. I it was also, a hot mess. Yeah, I also remember a lot of fear around the Claremont Twins because that was the first time I had dressed up in women's clothing and put that actually on a social media platform. Oh. So, and I remember we weren't together at the time. So I was super nervous. Like I had my, I had my mom. I had my dude's chair chat <laughs> on my social and I remember being like so nervous like oh my god are they gonna find me desirable once I put this up but there was just something in me that was just compelled me to be like okay if they do so what like that's not the kind of because I think I had an idea of the kind of person I wanted to be with and I knew the kind of person I wanted to be with would accept me mm. in all of my expressions and I was willing to sacrifice dudes who were not gonna be able to see that for the person I wanted to be with. And that was the same thing that compelled me to almost like test you to be like, okay, if you can see me like this and still find me desirable, then... I did not find him desirable. It wasn't to do with, it wasn't to do with the fact that he was dressed with women's clothing. Oh, it, wow. was, it was just not a fab look. The makeup was actually, shout out to my sister. <laughs> you, you need to work on, you need to work on that contour because... <laughs> and I think bringing it to the present day in terms of what role would that play in terms of like, how I see us now. I think that dating now should be one of the most beautiful experiences because from what I believe anyway with, with how I see the world and I see social media, the idea of presenting yourself masculine or feminine or this and that, it does nothing for desirability. I think a lot about who you are on the inside, a lot about the energy you present yourself with, I think it's the confidence thing because we have had some great experiences with a plethora of different varieties of regions across the world. And I think that one thing we've always loved are the people that are confident in themselves. Confidence goes a long way. Yeah. But I think people sometimes, you'll be surprised what you will find out about yourself if you allow yourself the freedom to desire without restraint. Mm. If you remove the restraint from yourself, if you tell yourself that narrative, I'm only into masculine guys, masculine, that may well be the truth, but see what happens if you just allow yourself to actually just desire or to experience people who sit outside of that rigid idea of what you think you desire. Yeah. You'll be surprised. So how do you handle situations where society or the gays label our dynamic in terms of masculinity and femininity? I think is the biggest source of amusement for me, if I'm being very honest with you, in the sense that the labels people perceive 
of our relationship is not one that has ever been something that I look at and I'm like, oh no, is, is Andrew feminine? Like, do I find him attractive because of that? It makes us laugh, if I'm being <laughs> very honest. Like, when we read the comments, like, this is gonna sound so stupid, like, oh, that's the woman, the relationship, because yeah. the, the voice, the tone of voice in that one, or the way they did their hand, it is just look at him, we just laugh, because we have come so far from that to the point where labels do nothing for us. It's so boring. The only label we have is that we're married, and outside of that, it's like there's so much life to experience away from comments, people's ideas. Like I understand him wanting to be with somebody who fits in the box, so that you have an idea. I of... guess it's more so for them. I think yeah. like, people like to put labels or put things in boxes so mm. that they can understand it. Mm. And I think for me, it's more of a reflection of your ability to understand things versus a reflection of my relationship. Like if you have to label me as the woman in the relationship for you to be able to understand what you're seeing. Good for you, sis. Good for you. Good for you. Because when all is said and done, you're limiting a lot of your experiences in life to what you perceive as this is how a man should be or this is how a woman should be or this and but therefore for this to work there needs to be a woman in the relationship, relationship for it to work that's how you that's your it reflects your understanding that's all i'm gonna say yeah if you clock the shade you clock it if you don't well that's why you think there's a woman in the relationship i guess no but i i think i guess what would be That's why you think there's a woman in a gay relationship. That's, well, yeah. Anyway. How do you balance the expression of both your masculinity and femininity in the relationship, but also understanding that there are, I don't use the word, I don't use the word boundaries, but there are limitations to some of the expressions I would want from you. Like, I wouldn't want you to be overly aggressive to me to present that your mother, that child to me. I don't want that. Mm. And I also wouldn't want you to be in the kitchen cooking and cleaning to present your feminine. So, I'm joking. I'm joking. I, <laughs> guys, oh my God. Can we like joke a little bit on this? Yeah. Oh, I'm so politically correct. So yeah, but how do you balance that so that you, you I guess in a way, be true to yourself, but also be desirable to, towards me. I think it's hard because I think there's some compromises that need to be had as well. Because sometimes what's what you find desirable may not be authentic to how I express myself, right? Mm. Like there are definitely some instances where there'd be some things that you would desire, want to desire from me, but it's not something that I can fulfill. Mm. And so I think I try and prioritize what is authentic to me first, mm. but I think I could, be better at understanding more about maybe some of the things that you might find desirable for me to do and compromising on that every now and then mm. not making it the norm but like as a treat for instance mm. kind of expressing myself in that way that you'll find desirable in that moment or when you're feeling that type of way mm. yeah i think i could be better at that Okay. Um, but I do prioritise me authentically expressing myself first and having trust that I know that, that is what you find desirable but I think there'd be t there are times where I could, I could switch it up a bit. Okay. And I think that that's a fair sort of reflection on sort of desirability and authenticity with how you present yourself because I think for me I'm very vocal and I think you know exactly how I feel, what I want, how I express myself. For example now since I've had this blonde hair don't talk to me rudely. Don't look at me rudely, because I'm that bitch. Like, I am in my, like, exuding feminine era right now. Like, I, I want to feel it. I want to feel love. And it's just what I want at this point in time. Now, am I doing it too much? Yes. Am I going to stop? Maybe when I dye my hair, but he's here to enjoy the ride and see this expression of myself. Cool. So, what advice would we give to other couples when looking to balance desirability and their expression, whether that be masculinity and femininity. I think go where you are wanted. Go where you are wanted in all of your beautiful masculine and feminine expression. Prioritize that. But also, I think don't be afraid to challenge the person that you're with. If they're the right person and you foresee a future with them, 
and you want to experiment and you want to i think sometimes masculinity and femininity is also a performance so mm -hmm. i don't think it needs to be taken too seriously and i think the beautiful thing about performance is you can play with it you can experiment with it you can see okay i picked that up i don't like uh, i realize that doesn't actually work for me and it's not something that my partner finds desirable okay let's move on these are all elements of yourself that you can play with they're not so set in stone in your identity. Some things may be a bit more innate than others, mm. but I think it doesn't have to be taken too seriously. And I think by you allowing yourself to play with expression, it opens up your mind to a lot more desire that perhaps you were cutting yourself off from before. Yeah. Yeah. And I think I do agree it, to an extent to go where you're desired. I also believe in allowing people time to adjust to the changes you you do decide to make because I have been through it with, with this boy. <laughs> Surprise! <laughs> I'm into this now. Like yeah. shapeshifter, like chameleon. Andrew has changed so much. He went through his the worst era he ever went through was when he went through what is the word? How would I put it? Almost like a down low, very like oh, just just I I read. I'm gonna find some pictures. I, but that was like a classically masculine era, but it wasn't attractive. No. Yeah. No. See, like I told you, all of these things, you have to remain fab. Like, I don't care how you want to express yourself. Like, be confident and be fab. fab. Like, be fab. <laughs> like, but yeah, I really believe in giving grace for people to, so, in some ways, meet you where you are, in the sense that it took a lot of unlearning from my own ideals of like what a masculine presenting man should be especially being a nigerian raised household of man this and that so it took time for me to adjust to like no there can be fluidity in this expression now i'm not saying that everybody's gonna change but you get an idea if it's not coming from a place of negativity but a place of lack of understanding mm. there can be education around that, they could be learning around that. So I think giving grace would be the number one thing. And I think the also other thing, I, I think Andrew Rick said is you've got to experiment. There's so much longevity with life and with relationships that you never know what somebody could try one day that gives you joy, gives you pleasure and gives you. So I think allow yourself to fully experience somebody as a whole, not as just one aspect of who they are. Yeah, yeah. Because the way Andrew expresses himself when he dances is completely different to the way he expresses himself if he finds somebody attractive and wants to say hi to them. Like, it's all just so fluid, but it's always attractive because he does it in a fab way now. It's always fab now. So yeah, I, I think that allow yourself to really enjoy somebody's full self, whole self, in how they express themselves. Because I don't really believe in leaning one way or the other. If you like it that way, you like it that way. But for me, I just ex be full, be, be, be your full self. Mm. Okay, well, that's it for today. Um, yeah. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Check out our social media as well if you want to stay connected. Our Instagram at T and Drew, our TikTok at T and Drew, and our solo Instagram accounts to um, at T's Journey and at It's Andrew O'Donnell. So thank you once again for all the support and we'll catch you in the next episode.